Lupin, 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 Lupin the bird. <laughs> yes, guys, it's the Lupin update. <laughs> I went pretty, I don't know why I did, I, I just shut all those. I don't know why I went quite as crazy as this, but I went pretty Lupin crazy. So we got the, um, and Discotech crazy as well. Uh, we got the Castle of Cagliostro Collector's Edition on Blu-ray, which is a fantastic release. We'll get into these in, a little more in a minute, uh, more in depth. But uh, and then we got Lupin the Third Bye by Lady Liberty, which is the third, first sorry, uh, TV special. And then we got the second one, Hemingway Papers. And then we've also got Napoleon's Dictionary, and then we've also got A Lack of Space, but I'll try my best. <laughs> we've also got From Siberia with Love, or From Russia with Love, I can't remember. Uh, I mean, this the cover says From Siberia with Love, but I believe the original name for that special might be From Russia with Love. I can't quite remember, unless that is the original translation. I don't know, whatever. And then I also got Lupin the Third, Episode Zero, The First Contact, which you can't really see. A lot of Lupin, basically. Um, basically, uh, just recently I've gone on a bit of a binge of uh, Lupin stuff. Um, uh, previously, like, before my... Oh, don't want to jog the camera too much. Before my recent binge... I'd seen the first nine episodes of this, and I really need to finish it, I don't know why I didn't. Um, I also watched this, The Mystery of Marmo. Uh, I've also seen Green vs. Red, which I highly recommend. This is the 40th anniversary special. Um, yeah, it's really good. And then um, I'd obviously seen, this is the first Lupin thing I ever saw, a bit of a weird place to start, but that's where I started, uh, Lupin the Third. The woman called Fijiko Mine. So that's everything I'd seen up until my recent binge. And then I went on a binge of something I've been meaning to do for ages. But I watched uh, The Fuma Conspiracy, which is really good. This is a the 20th anniversary. Uh, is it the 20th anniversary special or is this just an anniversary edition? Uh, it might just be an anniversary edition, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Lupin the Third, the, con uh, the Fuma Conspiracy film. This is really good. Uh, it's probably the. Um, I think it's the most loved uh, Lupin movie after, obviously, the Castle of Tokyo story. Um, then we've got the uh, Funimation sets. Uh, these are the Hall sets. So they have all of the uh, specials and movies that Funimation did, which uh, amounts to ten. Um, I think it's eight specials and two movies. But uh, I watched all of these, really enjoyed them. So I watched the complete first Hall movie pack and the complete final Hall movie pack. So I've been on a complete Lupin binge and I've been absolutely loving it. I've fallen in love with the characters and uh, the mischief. I just really love the formula of, because it's not continuity based, um, you know, each each story is just a story. It doesn't have to rely on anything that happened in previous stories or have to worry about anything that happened in previous stories. You just get the, the general setup. Lupin the Master Thief is a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, fellow crew, I guess, are not really a crew, but what Jigen is, he's pretty much a permanent member of Lupin's crew for the most part. And then you got Goemon and obviously Fujiko. Um, but I just really love it. I love Zenigata, he's a fantastic character, uh, the ICPO uh, police chief who's always after Lupin. But I, yeah, I have absolutely fallen in love with this franchise, completely head over heels in love with it. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I've watched uh, a lot of it recently. Uh, I have seen now the, um, the Castle of Cagliostro, which I'd never seen before. My first experience of it was on Blu-ray. Uh, really enjoyed it. It's not my, actually my favourite Lupin thing, but it's right up there. Like it's definitely on par. It's definitely the higher, uh, one of the more higher quality productions, which is, isn't surprising given it's a Miyazaki uh, directed film. Obviously, before his Studio Ghibli days, it was really it's a very important film for Miyazaki because it was his one of, if not his first, uh, like, proper at-the-helm directed uh, film, and even though it didn't do particularly well when it came out, it eventually garnered a lot of praise, and it helped uh, build up his uh, reputation much even further, that eventually led him to, obviously, doing uh, his Studio Ghibli stuff, and becoming one of the most renowned Japanese directors in history. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the uh, Castle Cagliostro, and uh, that edition 
is absolutely incredible. It's it's a fantastic release. It um, obviously has something that I love Discotech for doing. Uh, it has every single uh, dub, which is uh, every single... I think it's... Okay, it has the two English dubs and the Japanese. That's it. So you've got the original Japanese, and you've got the streamlined dub and the manga dub. It's also got the 1980 theatrical sub subtitle restoration. I really have to talk about this. Um, yeah, any of you who have been following this release already know about it, but basically, uh, when this film was first uh, shown in English, it was shown on uh, airplane flights to Japan from America. Like, I, I don't quite, I don't know what flights they were on. Maybe like, I don't know. I won't try and guess honestly. But yeah, flights from between America and Japan. It was shown, and it has like the subtitles, which are pretty bad. <laughs> but when Disco Tech licensed the film, and they got all the uh, assets uh, sent to them, some uh, in a they got a, the 1980 original theatrical sub subtitle um, English subtitles uh, script included. So they just went, you know what, screw it. We're going to put them on there in their original bad uh, English with mistakes. Uh, included, I think, like, Hayao Miyazaki's called, like, is it, I can't remember what he's called. I don't think it's Goro Miyazaki, because isn't Goro Miyazaki what his son's called? I can't remember. Whatever, there's, like, a bunch of mistakes on it, it's really cool. And they've got, obviously, a new subtitle translation to bring it fully up to date. And you've also got, ca you've got cast and crew, um, uh, brain's not working, cast and, cast and crew interviews. Feature commentary, Reed Nielsen, which is really good, it's one of the better ones he's done. And, uh, yeah, just... It's a fantastic release. It looks beautiful. It's dirt, dirt cheap. You like compared to the Disney Ghibli Studio Ghibli releases. Obviously, this isn't actually a Studio Ghibli production, but still, compared to the uh, pre other Miyazaki, I guess, directed Blu-ray films, this is an absolute bargain. And um, the only one, uh, only other one I've watched so far out of these is uh, Bye Bye Lady Liberty, which I watched yesterday. Uh, I watched it twice because one thing I've been doing with these uh, discotheque releases is if they have a commentary, which a lot of the Lupin releases do, um, not all of them, but majority of them do have commentary tracks, I've been re-watching it immediately afterwards with the commentary on. Um, but yeah, I really like Bye Bye Lady, Lib uh, Bye Bye Lady Liberty. It's a very well produced, because it, it was the first TV special, they clearly put more money into this one than I imagine they probably did for the previous... Well, no. the ones that came after, basically. <laughs> um, but it's really good. Like it's a, it's just kind of a silly story. Like there are some really ridiculous moments. Like uh, Lupin and Jigen basically put the equivalent of like a helium balloon on top of the Statue of Liberty and float it into the Grand Canyon as they try not steal the Statue of Liberty, but try to find this diamond that might just be in the Statue of Liberty. So. And that all happens pretty early on, so it's not a major spoiler, I hope. <laughs> but yes, uh, Loop on the Fur by Bay Lady, Lady Liberty is really good. And then I haven't watched these yet. I have to be careful, they're going to fall. Um, but yeah, again, like this is the second one, Hemingway Papers, and it also includes a commentary, this one with Mike Tall and Reed Nielsen. Uh, Mike Tall, obviously, from Anime News Network, Reed Nielsen from Loop on the Fur.net. And then uh, this one has Mike Tool, and I believe it has, uh, yeah, Daryl Surratt from at the Anime World Order, so that should be an interesting listen. So that's Napoleon's Dictionary. And this one, unfortunately, doesn't have a commentary track. I don't know if they just weren't able to find a um, enough things to talk about, because I, I must admit, the commentary track on Bye Bye Lady Liberty isn't that great. Like... Uh, I feel like uh, Mike Tool, who does it, is really struggling to find enough to talk about because a lot of the time he's just basically uh, following the story, as it were, like explaining just some of the finer elements that are going on, but nothing too dramatic. I mean, he does talk about, to extensive length, uh, about the director, Samu Des Dezaki, and uh, gives you a pretty much a tour guide of all his uh, great uh, techniques, as it were. But, yeah, there's definitely um, not <laughs> the best commentary out there. Compared to the other ones I've heard from, like, Casa Capiostro and the Fuma Conspiracy, which I believe is a Mike Tool commentary, I think. Yeah, pretty sure it is. It was really good. But, uh, no, that was Reed Nielsen, actually, but whatever. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, 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 I've been talking freaking about Lupin stuff for almost ten minutes, so I'm going to leave it there. But that's uh, all the Lupin stuff I picked up. Really happy about it. Uh, this is everything Lupin. Like, I know it's all a mess right now in front of you, but um, 
Okay, so th this is the incomplete uh, Lupin <laughs> releases uh, in English uh, that you can buy. I'm pretty sure I don't believe I have anything missing. At least on DVD, anyway. Uh, this is everything. So, yeah, you've got Lupin the Third original TV series and Discotheque, Marmo, Castle Catio, so it's pretty much all Discotheque apart from these two and this one. But, uh, and that's in the wrong place right now, <laughs> but whatever. That is the complete order, uh, the complete order and the complete releases of Lupin the Third. Let's move on to something else, shall we? Okay, next up we have uh, DD Fist and the North Star. This is the Sentai Film Works Blu ray release, complete collection. Each episode is only about 15 minutes, but has all 26 episodes included in this one set, which is nice. So yeah, the complete collection of it. Uh, this is the parody series, a super deformed series. It basically, it's a comedy series, obviously. It plays on the idea or the, with the concept of what these characters would be doing if the apocalypse never happened, which is a fun idea, and it just uh, parodies a lot of uh, uh, scenarios from the series, as far as I'm aware, or just like character concepts and etc. Um, I haven't watched it yet. I don't know when I'm going to watch it because I want to be as well versed in Fist of the North Star as possible before diving into this series just so I can get the most out of it. You know, I want. I don't have the greatest memory so there might be things that will still go over my head and as much as I've seen the Fist of the North Star I'm not that well versed in, in it I guess other than just you know knowing the story and having seen the story. But so far as like the the finer points of the franchise as a whole and the finer points of the characters I guess uh, some of that stuff might I might have just uh, not uh, I haven't digested as as well as perhaps I would have liked but uh, yeah uh, just recently I have practically finished my uh, Fist of the North Star collection I've finished collecting it uh, DD Fist of the North Star was the last part that is currently available in English for Fist of the North Star that I needed but um I finished the original TV series, so you got the first three, which is the 109 episode uh, first TV run. I finished that last year, and just recently, uh, as of like two days ago, I finished uh, Fist of the North Star Part 2, which is on Volume 4 of the Disco Tech release. Wasn't the greatest fan of Fist of the North Star Part 2, honestly. Um, I feel like it lost its way a little bit in terms of just what the show is originally about. It introduces a bunch of stuff that it just doesn't really fit, it like tried to shoehorn all these ideas in and all these things and it kind of meddled with the past as well, like it was like saying oh this happened in the past and this happened in the past where it felt like well if that had happened surely we, we would have known about it already, it felt like it was ideas that were coming in too late that you know needed to be introduced earlier in order to really blend into the storyline smoothly and they, they kind of just like didn't obviously just by throwing them in at the late end as well as the fact the fights, the fights in the uh, part two, were, yeah, Fist and All Star two, just weren't. They went into the territory of Dragon Ball Z, not with like, not with powering up for five minutes or five episodes, <laughs> or any crazy shit like that, but just like throwing like energy, like chi, or it would be something that it's not chi, but something similar to that. You know, just throwing like spiritual fighting energy out of your hands to hurt someone, like out of your fingers and stuff. Like I know Fist and All Star is kind of like mystical bullshit kung fu. Like I get it, but still, it's kind of like that was going too far into the fantasy realm. Like I feel like in the original series, I might be misremembering it, but in the original series, it felt like it was much more fist to fist combat for the most part. I mean, obviously characters like Ray would like slice people in half just by. S going like that across their faces and stuff, with the, I think it was Waterfowl or something, his, uh, his uh, South Star combat, whatever, I can't remember. <laughs> as you can see, this is going to be my problem, it just doesn't, I don't seem to digest the information as well as I would like, it's just always been my problem. But anyway, yeah, I didn't, uh, Fist and Star 2 is okay, like it has a pretty good payoff, a really good payoff actually, I quite enjoyed the payoff at the end, but yeah, it's not the greatest season. But I also watched the movie for the first time, finally. Uh, the movie's kind of cool. It is literally just the first 109 episodes of the TV series uh, told again, but, well, sort of. It's kind of, <laughs> I can't, I've, I'm pretty sure the movie came out before the TV series finished airing. I might be wrong about that, but, if, like, the, the TV series was on, but I'm pretty sure the movie came out before the run ended, so it's probably more closer to the manga, but even then, like, at two hours, there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on in the movie. Uh, New Fist and All Star here is actually a sequel, I've since learned, to um, Fist and All Star 2, apparently, at least according to my anime list. 
Um, I I did watch it back in the day, and I, I'm probably going to rewatch it now because I don't really remember too much about it. It was my first Fist of the North Star experience. So, and uh, obviously there's this down here, Legends of the Dark King, a Fist of the North Star story, which is about Raul, Raul. I'm pretty sure, and all the stuff that goes on before the Fist of the North Star or around this sort of era of the storyline or whatever. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, basically all my Fist of the North Star stuff uh, up to date. Um, there's a couple of things that still haven't been released in English. The main thing, and the thing that I probably want more than anything else, is the TMS Entertainment films. Uh, that are based around a lot of the main characters from the original 109 episodes. I really would like to see those come out. I'm surprised they haven't, honestly. Like, it just seems bizarre to me. Because, yeah, they, they feel like prime candidates for releases. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video to do with TMS Entertainment pretty soon, so I'll be talking about those in further detail then. But, yeah, that's uh, all my Fist and All Star up to date, thanks to DD Fist and All Star on Blu-ray. Let's uh, move on, shall we? Okay, so next up we have uh, Heroic Legend of Aslan. Uh, this is the original six episode uh, 90s OVA. Well, it's a four episode OVA plus a second sequel to episode OVA, as far as I'm aware. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a Central Park Media release. Uh, this is different in a number of ways to the version that's currently airing now. Obviously, there's a series airing right now, I believe it's coming to an end, uh, of. Or maybe it already has ended. Whatever. <laughs> Called Heroic Legend of Aslan. Um, basically, this is an adaptation of what I believe is a novel. I think it's a novel. It might be an old manga, but I'm going to lean towards a novel. Again, could be wrong, like a fantasy novel. And this is a direct adaptation of that, the original novel of uh, Heroic Legend of Aslan. Um, the version that is currently airing now on tele... Uh, currently airing is... Uh, <laughs> it's a adaptation of Hiromo Arakawa, who is the former Alchemist mangaka. It's an adaptation of her manga version of the novel, the original novel, I believe. So it's a bit different. Like this. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm honestly probably not going to watch this until I've seen the Funimation version, primarily because the Funimation version, again, while not a direct adaptation, um, is a lot longer, obviously, it's at 26 episodes, and it has the much cleaner anim animation. It has the uh, Hiromo Arakawa's uh, character designs, which I really like. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Fullmetal Alchemist. I really like Silver Spoon, which is another one of her works. I need to see her other stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'd be, I'm pretty looking forward to it, Arslan. I don't know if I'm going to watch the uh, Simul dub once that's completed, or I'm going to wait for the Blu-ray release, but either way, I plan to watch that version before seeing this, but I wanted to pick this up because I saw this going for a really good deal. It was, like, £8 for, like, the complete set, and this is the original release. It's been released three times. There's this version, the first version, that came out in, like, 1999 or something, then there's another version, which I believe is dub-only with the red cover. I don't know why it's dub-only. But yeah, there's a don't buy that one <laughs> because the Central Park Media dub probably isn't that great. I haven't heard it, but in from experience, they're not always that good. Some of them are, but most of them aren't. And there's a Digipack, Digipack version, which comes in like nice collector's packaging, but it's way too expensive. And I, you know, I, I just wanted to own it more than anything, so I got this version. Although it does come in this far bigger packaging than it needs to, given that it's only two discs, and yet it takes up like almost two DVDs worth of space on the shelf, which is unfortunate, but yeah. Anyway, that's uh, The Heroic Legend of Arslan, let's move on. Uh, next up we've got a release I've been uh, planning to get for a while, just didn't get around to it. Uh, this is Lily Cat, this is the uh, 1980s film. Uh, basically, it's kind of like Alien, uh, <laughs> a mix of uh, characters and personalities, basically you've got like, some guys that are just like... Uh, as the back cover describes it, space jockeys, and, some, and you've got some scientists. They're all basically on a mission to go to this planet, a paradise world, as they call it, and uh, uh, to uh, get whatever they need from this paradise world. Again, I haven't seen it yet, I just read the back cover. And this is basically the general gist I've got of it. And uh, an alien is on board their ship, or gets on board their ship, and wreaks havoc. Uh, something also takes over the, the space... Uh, the spaceship controls and it's basically just a battle for survival probably this alien just picking them off one by one it looks like good fun just like a <laughs> good old sci-fi horror uh, movie um, uh, the dub it has been dubbed uh, was done by streamline pictures so it was originally released back in like the early 90s by streamline but uh, 
and it, it's only up until this point, up until this release, it had only ever been released with the English dub. Oh, like that was it. So this is the first time we've ever gotten the Japanese version also included with English subtitles. So yeah, uh, just something I've always wanted to get. Just some, you know, 90 minutes of sci-fi horror cheese. It looks pretty decent. <laughs> I don't know what if it actually will be, but I'm sort of looking forward to it. I'm hoping I'll at least like it. So yeah, that's a uh, Lily Cat. Penultimately, we have the 1973 uh, TV series Cutie Honey, a Toei animated series, 25 episodes, complete collection from Discotech. This is one of the first uh, of the classic series that Discotech have been picking up just over the last few years. You know, it's one of the first in the next line of those after Fist of the North Star. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> based on the uh, Go the Guy manga, uh, I've just been. I'm really annoyed at myself that I hadn't picked this up a while ago. I mean, this is something I'm looking to rectify. Like, I'm just going to make sure that whenever something classic comes out that gets me super excited because it's a classic series and I want to. I like to be. I like classic anime. Like, I'm interested in the history of anime. I like the. Uh, I like watching classic series and being well versed in just the entire spectrum of what anime, anime has to offer. So, um, as you've probably seen from my collection, I guess it's a bit of a collecting mix of just about everything. And, uh, yeah, uh, Cutie Honey is something i had been uh, wanting to check out for ages. I just don't, yeah, for some reason I didn't pick it up, but I've now rect since rectified that. Uh, looking forward to it. Only 25 episodes, it should be a relatively easy watch. Um, I'm looking forward to it for a number of reasons, because mainly because of the era that it's uh, it came out and the style that Go and the Guy has when it comes to female characters, which is sort of a mix between them being, you know, powerful uh, main characters or like just you know powerful characters like they're they're, they, they're up for a fight, it's things like that. You know, they're not damsels in distress. But they're also sort of like 70s styled uh, sexualized, I guess, in some, to some extent. And um, uh, the reason why that intrigues me is because of films like uh, stuff like The Stray Cat Rock. You know, stuff like this where um, <laughs> you just, uh, this is the film series, Stray Cat Rock. They're just kind of like exploitative uh, films from that era. And uh, Cutie Honey, for, I haven't watched Cutie Honey, but from I feel like a lot of what these films are about this is also about as well just uh, maybe not quite as a uh, extreme level since this is an 18 as you can see <laughs> r-rated mature rated whatever um and this obviously isn't but yeah i just feel like there's this i don't like i'm kind of manufacturing that myself but i just feel like there's a connection to that sort of stuff so i'm looking forward to uh, watching cutie honey it should be a, a good watch and finally for this pickups video last but certainly not least we have Devilman the uh, complete 70s series across five discs all 39 episodes from obviously again the lovely fantastic epic folks folks <laughs> discotech um, again this is going no go in the guy series 90, 1970s as I said Toei animated series um, Again, like I said, looking forward to it. I've watched the first episode already, enjoyed it. I do like going the guy's crazy uh, character designs. Like, I, I'm really fond of it. It's just, it's really over the top. Like, it's, it's certainly not subtle, <laughs> and it's great. Um, and just the first episode, honestly, like the stuff that goes on in it is just, especially towards the end, is just batshit crazy. And if that's the um, uh, the standard for the series going forward, and I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to watching. It. I don't know when I'm going to watch it properly. Um, probably, re I hope soon. I've been meaning to buy this for fucking eight. It came out in December, and I was super chuffed, super excited for it. But it just, I couldn't afford it in December when it came out. Like I can barely afford anything in December. Well, I say that I tend to buy a lot of stuff in December. It's more that stuff becomes available at really good prices in December, and stuff that's coming out brand new isn't necessarily high on my priority list. So. Yeah, December's not a great time for stuff to come out, and then it kind of just faded into the background of my priorities, And but I've fixed it now, I've got it, and I plan to keep on rectifying discotheque releases I've missed out on. Um, and this one, yeah, this one and Cutie Honey were, and Lily Cat to some extent were uh, ones I've been meaning to pick up for ages, so I'm glad to have finally done that, and uh, looking forward to watching it quite a bit. So yeah, that's been my... Um, Anime, anime pickups for the, I believe that was the second half of July, wasn't it?
yeah, second half of July. Um, I have some stuff in August, it's kind of nothing disco actually right now, but I do have some stuff coming. It's kind of cool. I think there's a yeah, yeah, some there's some stuff, whatever, stuff, stuff, stuff. <laughs> oh god, this is a long video, and I've been talking for ages, my mind is completely melted. Um, if you've made it this far, as always, thank you for watching. I hope I wasn't uh, too boring this time. I've kind of, I feel like I need to. I like this new way of doing the videos, but I feel like I need to rein myself in a bit because I've, I know I've waffled in this video quite a lot. So apologies for that if that wasn't really entertaining or interesting in any way. But anyway, um, it doesn't help that they have static menus. We need stuff that animates, guys. Make animated menus more often, please, because all these static menus kind of make it a bit less interesting. <laughs> like I can only shake my hands so much to keep people's attention. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for listening guys, and I'll see you next time.